Vostok 2 was launched on August 6, 1961 at 6 a.m. UTC from Gagarin's start at Baikonur Cosmodrome. The spacecraft was launched on a Vostok K rocket and carried cosmonaut Herman Titov, whose mission was to see if a human could survive and operate in space for a full day. This launch occurred nearly four months after Yuri Gagarin's initial single-orbit spaceflight, as well as after the suborbital hops of Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom. However, Titov would orbit the Earth at least 17 times, many times more than the combined human spaceflight experience so far. In doing so, he would have to do things that were not necessary on shorter flights, including eating and sleeping. The decision to attempt this long mission had been a difficult one to make. In Krabal Sputnik 2, the dogs on that 6-orbit mission had had physical issues, leading to a 3-orbit limit on the Krabal Sputnik flights. Doctors pushed to limit Titov's flight to 3 orbits as well. In his autobiography, Carrying the Fire, Michael Collins noted with frustration that the medical experts were always needlessly alarmed within NASA as well, so this tendency was true in both the United States and the Soviet Union. In the end, Sergei Korolev, the mastermind of the Soviet manned spaceflight operation, decided that because it would take a day for the spacecraft's orbit to pass over the prime landing site anyway, they might as well go for it. Unlike on Gagarin's flight, the launcher placed Vostok 2 in the intended orbit rather than in a higher orbit. The orbit for Titov was 244 kilometers by 183 kilometers with an inclination of 64.9 degrees. Vostok 2 featured a better transmission system and its frequencies were publicized, so Titov, unlike Gagarin, knew someone was listening to his reports. Its new climate control system was a mixed bag as one of the heaters did not function during the flight, so temperatures got down to 10 degrees Celsius. One thing that had not been fixed was the separation between the re-entry module and the service module. On Vostok 1, the equipment module remained attached to the re-entry module, causing bad wobbling, and it was only the heat and stress of re-entry that broke it off. This essentially happened again on Vostok 2, with the straps still holding the two together, unlike what is shown in the video, until re-entry heating burned through them. Despite the rocky re-entry, Titov made it back safely. He did experience the first ever bout of space sickness in flight as he experienced nausea shortly after making orbit and vomited while trying to eat one of the meals. Sleeping went fine though, and he actually slept a half hour more than expected. While the suborbital Mercury launches saw the first manual control of a spacecraft in space, Titov was the first to use manual control in orbit. He was also the first to manually take photographs from orbit and record a video of Earth from orbit. As Yuri Gagarin did, Herman Titov ejected from his capsule shortly before impact with the ground because it was deemed unsafe at that particular impact without anything to cushion it. To this day, he remains the youngest spacefarer ever, having reached space at the age of 25 years, 10 months, and 26 days. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Vostok 2.